Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this Feast of Reformation is Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Thus far our text. In Christ Jesus, our blessed Savior, dear Christian friends, often in the darkest days of the Reformation, Dr. Martin Luther would find strength praying through the Psalms. In these dark days of world history, we would do well to reclaim this practice. To reclaim the Psalms as our prayer book. Come, Philip, Luther would say, let us pray through the 46th Psalm as he encouraged his co-worker, Philip Melanchthon, not to lose heart. And so they had seen together Luther's paraphrase of this Psalm, a mighty fortress is our God, which we'll sing at the end of our service today. We would do all so well to reclaim this heritage. Just as little as Christians were meant to remain in the pew, so hymnals were never meant to be a church book. What's in our heart, we confess and sing forth on our lips. Rededicate yourself to singing hymns within your home, in daily family devotions, as you gather together around God's word, singing a psalm, repeating the catechism, praying with and for one another, and raising your voice to drive away the darkness of these days in sound Lutheran hymns. For here, you will find Christ is our refuge. A mighty fortress is our God. Luther did not always know this truth. He had been taught that God in Christ Jesus was a just God, ready to condemn all sinners to hell. Instead of looking to God as a refuge, he hated him. Because he was a God who demanded perfection from sinful human beings. He hated God for condemning him to hell. For the more he struggled to live a perfect life, the further Luther felt himself falling into sin. His conscience justly condemned him, a sinner, worthy of hell. It was as Luther studied the Psalms and then the book of Romans that he struggled with this phrase, the righteousness or the justice of God. He had taken it to mean what he had been taught. He thought justice or God's righteousness was that God was a just God who justly condemns the sinner to hell. But as Luther studied the book of Romans, God the Holy Spirit opened his eyes to see Christ at the center of it all. He read, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. For the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Luther wrote about it this way. Night and day, I pondered until I saw the connection between the justice of God and the statement that the just shall live by his faith. Then I grasped that the justice of God is that righteousness by which, through grace and sheer mercy, God justifies us through faith. Thereupon I felt myself to be reborn, to have gone through the open doors into paradise. The whole of Scripture took on a new meaning. And whereas before the justice of God had filled me with dread and hate, now it became an expressly sweet and greater love. This passage of Paul became to me a gate to heaven. Eyes open. They were fixed only upon Jesus. And Luther came to realize the Psalms were all about Jesus and God's mercy for us sinners in his cross and empty tomb. Listen and see. God is our refuge and strength, the very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed and the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling. Selah. Where do you turn? And your world is falling down around you. Where have you turned to in this year and over a year of pandemics? Turn off the noise and look only to God in Christ Jesus. Luther would say this, I know no God except Jesus Christ. He is the one who the psalm is talking about. 
Jesus is our fortress. He alone can shelter us as this world gives way and crashes down literally around us. See, in Jesus we have peace. We have life and hope. He is not a God and Savior who is watching from a distance. He has taken on your skin to shoulder your sin. And he knows your sin intimately because he carried them in his flesh and he paid for them fully on the cross. And he has washed away all of your sins with his blood. And he remembers your sins no more. So run to Jesus, not away from him. Run into his church where the Holy Spirit here daily and richly forgives you all your sins because Christ died for you. Find your shelter under Christ's cross. God is our strength. Suffering and dying for our sins. Jesus rose from dead, breathing forth words of victory. And those victory words sound like this, peace. And that peace is found in his holy wounds. Not in what you suffer, not what you give to God, but that God has given you all in Christ. Peace. As he breathes forth God the Holy Spirit, that peace words, absolution, may be spoken to the ears of us sinners. His word actually forgives you as your pastor speaks them. Because it's not your pastor's words. It's Christ speaking through him. And you are forgiven. God the Holy Spirit is always in Christ's word. To strengthen and keep you in this one true faith. God is a very present help in trouble. Three times in this psalm we're reminded that our God is with us. Jesus is Emmanuel. God with us, not just a God who is here for a brief 33 years and got out of here. He's here with us in the thick and thin of everything we suffer in this world. Or do you think he was not truthful? When he said to you in your baptism, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the earth. Jesus is here. He's with you as your brother. He sympathizes with you with all your weaknesses, your griefs, your sorrows, your struggles, and your joys. Therefore, run boldly to his throne of mercy and find grace and help in time of need. Stop living in fear, dear Christians. We've been fueled on fear. That is not faith. That's unbelief. Paul would echo this truth when he would say, what shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? The answer is no one. And how do you know that God is for you? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? The crucified Christ is proof that God stands with you, for you, and will not leave you nor forsake you. Dear Christian, this is the truth of the Reformation. The gospel frees you from slavery to fear. Walk by faith and not by sight. The struggles we face with sin, fear, and death are real. But learn from Luther to sing forth this psalm daily. Memorize it, confess it, sing it. Trust that Jesus is your fortress. He will never fail you. When the world totters and collapses, run to Jesus. He is here in his church, the city of God. Augustine would teach, the city of man is temporary. Nations rise and fall. This nation could fall. But that's not our hope. We are members of the city of God, of his holy Christian church. And so the psalmist confesses, there is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. On the final trip to Jerusalem, Jesus asked his disciples, who do men say that he is? And after they answered him, Jesus asked them directly, but who do you say that I am? And Matthew records, Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And also I say to you, that you are Peter on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. 
Jesus builds his church, not upon the person of Peter, but upon Peter's confession. That's why the statue of Peter here holds the keys. The confession that Jesus is the Christ, the Savior of the world. The confession that those keys are here to release us from our sins. St. Paul would put it this way, who holds the sword on the other side of the altar. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. The Christian church rests on the rock, on Jesus Christ. It's built on that foundation that the gates of hell will not prevail against us. The Christian church is nourished by the fountain that flows from Calvary. There Jesus proclaimed, it is finished. Your sin is paid for. Your shame, your guilt, your death, your hell is swallowed by Jesus. He lays himself into your grave. His side is pierced by the Roman spear and outflows blood and water. Living blood and living water is a stream that makes glad the city of God that pours from the side of Jesus our crucified and risen Savior. Why do we look at our churches and our Lutheran schools with worldly wisdom and wail that we're not popular with this world, we're not gaining numbers because of unbelief? We really don't believe the third commandment. We despise preaching and God's word. So we think we have to do something rather than just speak and let God's word do the work. The church is a tabernacle of the Most High. Here is two or three gathered together in Jesus' name, in his word and doctrine, to receive his gifts. Christ Jesus, our Emmanuel, is really here with us. He is here as our God, and hell will never overcome his church. He is here as our brother, who sympathizes with all that we face. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved, the psalmist confessed. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. Here, heaven and earth are reunited in the body and blood of Jesus. Lord Jesus, open our eyes, not only this Reformation Day, but every Sunday to see here that we are surrounded by angels and archangels and all the company of heaven. Lord Jesus, open my eyes that I may see that you are truly present here, breathing peace upon me through your word, forgiving my sins by the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. God shall help his church just at the break of dawn. And so it was, and so it shall ever be. The sun rose that first Easter Sunday morning. To the disciples, everything seemed lost. But then Jesus drew near with his living flesh and blood. And the good news rang out that Jesus lives, the victory is won. So be glad, city of God. Satan cannot win. Jesus is the Sabbath Lord who continues to fight for you. Trust him. Pray. Confess his name boldly in these last days of darkness. One little word topples the father of lies, Satan. It is just simply this, Satan, you lie. Jesus is the truth. The nations raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. Satan may engage in anti-Christian power and anti-Christian propaganda, to silence Christ's church and the gospel. But he loses. Communism in the Soviet Union was going to squish out the church. Seventy years later, communism fell. The church remained. Communism in China tries to squish out the church, to silence the preaching of the gospel. But the church remains. His word triumphs. He utters his voice, and no one can stand before the voice of God. Our hope isn't in our nation. Our hope is in Christ. His word is church. It's as citizens we need to defend our liberty for our neighbor. But that's not our hope. Our hope is in Jesus Christ, and we are truly freed through this word of Christ. And therefore, in these last days, treasure this word. Hand it down to your children and your grandchildren. Maintain your Lutheran schools, because here the truth is spoken that truly does set them free. If Christ was willing to give his death for our sins, 
Shouldn't we be willing to empty all of our pockets that the gospel might be preached here within our congregation and within our Lutheran school? Rejoice, Christian, for you are not abandoned. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. One holy angel wiped out 185,000 crack Assyrian soldiers in the days of Isaiah. The Lord of angel armies protects us. Christ Jesus surrounds us. He's by our side upon the battlefield of this world, and he has won us the victory. The God of Jacob, who promised to bring that trickster back to his homeland, is with us. He stands by our side. We're not at it alone. His cross is the true ladder that joins heaven to earth. Therefore, be at peace. Look away from yourself. Trust not in your plans. Dr. Luther, in one of his epistle apostles, writes, he didn't do anything to reform the church. All he did was preach Christ's word. And while him and Melanchthon sat and drank good Wittenberg beer, the Holy Spirit reformed the church. That is the power of the word. Dear Christians, that is the power of the word that's meant to be in your homes. Speak that word to your children. Husbands, speak it to your wives, and wives, speak it to your husbands. Pray for one another. Sing for one another. Build each other up in this most holy Christian faith. It's a Holy Spirit that sustains you in this faith. It's a Holy Spirit that sustains and blesses your family in this faith. Trust the Holy Spirit to work through Christ's word. Come behold the works of the Lord, who has made desolations in the earth. He makes wars to cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in fire. Look to the cross. See the works of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his suffering and death, he has gained for us a victory in a kingdom that will never fade away. He has made desolations by allowing himself to be made desolate, that he might bring us into his kingdom, which has no end. God, the Holy Spirit, brings you peace, peace through forgiveness. He brings us unity and doctrine in Christ, the truth in this age of the lie. Listen to the voice of Jesus. Be still and know that I am God. I'll be exalted among the nations. I'll be exalted in the earth. When Philip Melanchthon was burdened by the worries of the future, he often would remind himself saying this, Philip, ceased to rule the world. This past year, we should have learned well to say to ourselves, stop, cease to rule the world, be still, and know that you are not God. Be still and know that Jesus is God. He rules. He controls nations. Trust in him and his good and gracious will. And stop trying to be your own God. Let God rule. And trust in his good and gracious will that will keep you in his word and faith until you die. Be still for every knee will finally bow before Jesus Christ, the only Lord and Savior of sinful mankind. For he is coming to judge the living and the dead. The good news is he has judged you. He judged you when as an infant you were brought to that font. He claimed you to be his own forgiven child. He spoke you alive with the water poured over your infant brow. And he said, you are mine in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and I will save you. Christ's word fell Satan's lies and accusations. Abide in his word, the truth frees you from this lie. The Lord of hosts is with us, the psalmist closes with. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Jesus is the God who is with us. And that's the blessing that the Reformation again opened our ears to hear. The psalmist sings forth this blessed truth, you are not alone. Begin and end your day, speaking his living word of baptismal promise. Confess the truth, the Apostles' Creed, the faith given to you by the Holy Spirit in Christ's blood. And throw all your worries on your loving Heavenly Father as Jesus teaches you to pray. No, as Jesus prays with you and breathes you his comforting spirit. Then go joyfully to your vocation, serving your neighbor in Christ's love. 
or at the end of the day, go to sleep in peaceful rest in your Father's loving hand. Then when the day of your death comes, because it's coming for all of us, then you can be at peace. You will need not fear. Even though death might be like a raging ocean, our mountains fall into the sea, you'll hear Jesus say to you, be still and know that I am God. And looking only to Jesus, you will fall asleep in good cheer. For the kingdom remains yours in Christ your Savior. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which is above all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.